Do you have a patient who complains from pain either spontaneous or with eating and you did not see or detect any caries? Do you have a patient who constantly complains from having a bad breath? Bring your probe and try to put it between the teeth because this is a periodontal pocket. Hello and welcome to Dentistry 101, your source for online dental education. We hope that you enjoy. A periodontal pocket is a pathologically deepened gingival sulcus. The depth of the normal gingival sulcus is between 1 to 3 millimeters. Any increase in this depth because of the attachment loss around the teeth is considered to be a periodontal pocket. Periodontal pocket is a form of chronic periodontal inflammation or periodontitis, which is the advanced disease form of the gingivitis. Gingivitis is the inflammation of the gums around the teeth. Periodontitis starts as gingivitis, which happens happens mainly because of the improper oral hygiene. The mouth is full of harmful and harmless bacteria. Gingivitis starts by the imbalance or dysbiosis due to the increased action of the pathogenic bacteria due to either the lack of the competition from the friendly bacteria or because of the ineffective protection of the teeth due to improper oral hygiene or people having periodontal risk factors such as smoking, diabetes or HIV or even hereditary. The increased accumulation of the pathogenic bacteria forms a colorless biofilm bacterial layer which is the dental plaque. The gingiva starts to become inflamed and the patients start to experience gingivitis. The dental plaque favorably grows inside of the gingiva because most of these bacteria are anaerobic and inside of the gingiva the oxygen tension is low. This layer becomes hardened with calcium and phosphorus to form the dental calculus which is hard to remove and protects the bacteria inside and provides them with the needed anaerobic environment. Gingivitis is characterized by patients having redness or bleeding gums especially when using the toothbrush or when flossing or eating hard foods such as apples. The presence of bad breath or halitosis is also found in these patients and some patients could complain from having a metallic taste. If the patient neglects the oral hygiene instructions or does not go to the dentist for the calculus removal, the inflammation will continue and will advance and the body immunity inside of the gingiva will be weakened because of the increased number of different bacteria specifically the porphyrimonas gingivalis which impairs the immune cells inside of the gingiva and makes the bacteria to cause more damage this causes the body to increase the inflammation and have an increased blood flow the inflammation causes the collagen fibers in the periodontal ligament to start denaturating and the periodontal fibers start to become lost osteoclasts start to become activated and bone loss starts around the teeth. These changes cause the gingiva to start gingival recession, resulting in the apparent lengthening of the teeth. Dental pockets start to become formed, which is characterized by a deep pain inside of the bone. And also when probing inside of the pocket, there will be pain and bleeding because of the alteration of the inner aspect of the pocket due to this degenerative inflammation. Pus or separation could be present and ooze out of the periodontal pocket, a condition called periodontal abscess. It should be noted that the severity of pain and the discharge of pus is not related with the actual amount of destruction in the periodontal ligament. It only indicates that the periodontal inflammation or periodontal disease is in an active form. Periodontal pockets can be diagnosed by periodontal probing and using x-rays. It should be noted that the amount of bone loss and destruction in the x-ray is less severe than the actual condition. There is an ongoing inflammation inside of the patient's mouth which makes the condition worse clinically than what appears on the x-ray because the x-ray only shows what has already been lost. If the probing depth is more than 3 mm, then this indicates that it is a periodontal pocket and an established periodontal disease and an attachment loss. Sometimes the probing depth could be more than 3 mm but not because of the loss of the attachment. Sometimes the gingival inflammation in the early stages could lead to an enlarged gingiva which increases the probing depth without an actual loss of the epithelial attachment or loss of bone or periodontal ligament around the teeth. To be a true periodontal pocket there must be a bone loss and epical migration of the epithelial attachment around the teeth. Pockets can be simple which involves one surface of the teeth or compound which involves two surfaces of the teeth or complex which involves more than two surfaces of the teeth. 
We need to understand the concept of the biologic width. The bone is protected by a 2 mm layer of biological width. This biological width prevents any bacteria or food to enter to the bone surface and cause any inflammation. The biological width differs from one person to another. On the average values, it consists of 1 mm of connective tissue attachment, which is a strong type of attachment and provides a strong seal for the bone. Above the 1 mm of connective connective tissue attachment, there is an epithelial attachment which is also an average of 1 mm. Above them is the gingival sulcus. The sum of the connective tissue and the epithelial attachments provide us with the biological width, which is an average of 2 mm. It should be noted that the margins of any restoration or crown or veneer should be located away from the biological width. Any violation of the biological width will cause inflammation of the periodontal ligament fibers resulting in attachment and bone loss. To be on the safe side, try to stay at least 2.5 millimeters away from the bone level. Try to use supragingival margins as much as possible because they are more hygienic and they protect the periodontal ligament. In cases where subgingival margins should be used, try not to place them more than half millimeters inside of the gingival sulcus. If you go for the complete 1 millimeter of sulcus depth, there is a big chance that you will violate the normal 2 mm of biological width and the patient will complain from periodontal inflammation even if he maintains proper oral hygiene. Biological width invasion will cause continuous inflammation and bone loss because the body mechanism tries to protect the bone by moving it away from any external body. The inflammation will cause the epithelial attachment and the connective tissue attachments to be become lost and the gingival sulcus will become deepened and the periodontal pockets will start to become formed. Many clinicians do not pay proper attention and respect for this biological width. In badly decayed teeth where the crown margins need to be placed deeply subgingival, try to perform crown lengthening to move the biological width away from the place you plan to perform the margins of your restoration. Researchers have found out that there is a two-way relationship cycle between the hyperglycemia and the chronic periodontal disease. Hyperglycemia increases the progression rate of the periodontal diseases. People with uncontrolled diabetes have three times more chances to develop periodontal disease than people who do not have diabetes. Having a good glycemic control is very important to prevent the establishment or prevent the exaggeration of the periodontal disease. People who have diabetes have defective neutrophils. These defective neutrophils are not able to migrate and phagocyte the microorganisms that are responsible for the periodontal disease fast, which increases the rate of the periodontal disease. People who have diabetes also have hyperresponsive monocytes and macrophages, which increase pro-inflammatory cytokines, which cause an increased periodontal damage, much more than people who do not have diabetes. On the other way around, having periodontal disease could cause the healthy people to have diabetes because the presence of chronic inflammation in the human body increases the insulin resistance. Having an increased insulin resistance decreases the sugar intake by the body cells which increases the blood sugar levels. This could lead to hyperglycemia and to diabetes. People who smoke are four to six times more likely to develop periodontal disease than non-smokers. The nicotine found in cigarettes is responsible for the retardation of the growth of the gingival fibroblasts and the increase in the collagen breakdown and vasoconstriction of the blood vessels, which decreases the flow of the immune cells inside of the gingiva to fight the bacterial effects and increases the periodontal breakdown. People who smoke are not likely to bleed when probing during clinical examination of the pockets because of the decreased blood flow of the periodontal pocket. Concerning the treatment of the periodontitis, the prognosis depends on the amount of bone remaining around the teeth. If the amount of bone around the teeth is low, the prognosis is not quite high. 
successful periodontal treatment starts with establishing proper oral hygiene. This includes using toothbrush twice every day and using dental floss and interdental brush. The toothbrush should be soft to prevent damage for the interdental papilla and prevent further recession. Interdental brush is useful if pockets start to form between the teeth. People who have movement problems such as having Parkinson's disease or arthritis are recommended to use powered toothbrush. Powered toothbrush does not offer any advantage for normal healthy individuals. People with periodontitis must realize that it is a chronic inflammatory disease and a lifelong dedication to proper and excellent oral hygiene is a must to prevent the further advancement of the periodontal disease and an absolute cooperation with the dentists by regularly coming for checkups and removing any calculus as soon as it is formed is recommended. Dentists need to provide root surface instrumentation supragingively using ultrasonics and and subgingivally using curettes to remove all of the bacterial plaque above and inside the gingival sulcus to provide a good atmosphere for periodontal healing. Teeth which have reduced bone support, occlusion adjustment is recommended by removing the tooth out of occlusion to decrease the forces on this tooth. Re-evaluation of all the fillings, crowns or restorations is recommended because sometimes they are the causative factor for the periodontitis. If the biological width is invaded, it should be restored by changing the restoration or the crown or performing crown lengthening procedures. Rough restorations need to be smoothened out open contacts need to be closed. Follow-up visits could be done once every month. Probing depth should not be done for at least six weeks after making scaling and root planning because probing could interrupt the healing of the periodontal pocket. The probing depth should be done after at least two months. During the first month of follow-up visual inspection to detect the periodontal condition and see if there is an inflammation or not should be done without probing. Pockets which are more than 5 to 6 millimeters or show bleeding on probing when done after 3 months. This indicates that the disease is still active and further bone loss could be expected. Open flap periodontal surgery could be indicated in these cases because there could be subgingival calculus which is not accessible without opening a flap. The dentist needs to open a flap and provide proper cleaning and removal of the subgingival calculus and plaque. The advantage of the open flap debridement is that it provides better visualization of the root surface to be cleaned. Guided tissue regeneration has a greater effect on the probing measures of the periodontal treatment than open flap debridement. It improves the level of attachment gain and reduces the pocket depth and could cause the reformation of the hard tissue. However, the problem of the guided tissue regeneration is that it is not standardized and the results vary greatly between one person to another and between different studies. Periodontitis could affect the aesthetics of the anterior teeth because of the receded gingiva or because of the black triangles which are formed between the teeth. Periodontal surgery could be indicated in these cases and the black triangles could be closed by using composite or veneers. Studies have shown that using doxycycline inhibits the action of collagenase enzyme in the periodontal ligament when there is an inflammation. This could aid in the pocket depth reduction during the treatment. Sometimes extracting of the hopeless teeth is the best line of treatment. Extraction is indicated when the mobility is very severe and when the patient does not show any improvement of the condition. Usually teeth having one third of the bone remaining or less are considered to be hopeless. Some cases where the periodontal pockets are present for a long time, palpal necrosis could happen, which is something called a perioendo lesion. Performing periodontal treatment in addition to root canals should be made. Perioendo conditions could be diagnosed by teeth having dead pulp and periapical lesions with the absence of caries and the presence of pockets around them. Recent studies show that the cardiovascular diseases are strongly associated with the chronic periodontitis because the chronic periodontitis increases the inflammatory mediator levels in the blood which increase the onset of the cardiovascular diseases. To summarize, 
Periodontal pockets are chronic inflammatory conditions which need absolute oral hygiene measures by the patient throughout his lifetime using the toothbrush, mouthwashes, interdental brushes, and the tooth floss. Patients should return to the dentists an average of once every six weeks to evaluate the progress of the periodontal inflammation. Checking the improvement of the probing depth should not be done before six weeks of the follow-up because if the probing was done will lose the attachments that it has gained. Periodontal disease is linked to diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. Both of these conditions could increase the periodontal disease and having periodontal disease could cause the healthy people to have diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And this brings an end to our video Periodontal Pockets 101. If you like the video please hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.